Ladies and gentlemen, Atomic Heart's second DLC is finally out, and it is as boring as it is beautiful. Now, boring is quite a subjective term that doesn't really reflect the product's quality. There's people who unironically enjoy Assassin's Creed games, despite them being, well, garbage. So it's only appropriate we start off Atomic Heart's second DLC with something objectively bad. Trapped in Limbo released on the 6th of February 2024 with no new achievements. This is not an oversight, but rather a conscious decision that undoubtedly saw Monfish not making the dala dalas they were capable of. There are many examples of players skipping out on the DLC due to a lack of new achievements, and I would be amongst them if I wasn't making this video. You see, for me to return to a game I have already experienced, I need more incentive than just new content. I have a bottomless list of games I want to play, all offering me entirely new content. So for me to pick a different flavored slice of a cake I already tasted, I need a pat on the back in the form of Steam achievements. It's quite simple really. I play the DLC, I hear and I'm happy. As of recording this on March 27th, 2026, there are still no new achievements. If anyone from Muntfish is watching, I made some achievements that don't go against the flow of the DLC. Do with this what you will. To contrast this quite negative point, we have something remarkably positive. The OST for Trapped in Limbo is phenomenal. I have been listening to Atomic Heart's take on 1987's Nazaria by Allianz practically non-stop ever since they released it. This by no means does the track any justice, but here's a little snippet. The OST goes so unbelievably hard that even the worms are having a blast. Now you might be thinking that these are not worms, and actually something more in line with the theme of Appaloosies and Lamboobies. But I've seen enough Anita Max Wiener, so let's just pretend they're worms. Trapped in Limbo takes place directly after Atomic Heart's ending. Literally, as soon as P3 passes out, the DLC begins, in the unconscious realm of Limbo. Right off the bat, Monfish have an incredible amount of creative freedom here, as they're not condemned to uphold any relative sense of realism. Artistically speaking, Monfish made great use of this freedom, but in terms of gameplay, they fumbled the bag. What you're seeing on screen right now is not some brain-rotting gameplay used at the bottom of YouTube shorts to keep zoomer brains engaged, it's the entire gameplay shtick of this DLC. You surf around like you're making a 2016 YouTube commentary video, you temple run after goofy RP3, and occasionally you fight reskinned enemies. As you surf, you collect apples and coins before eventually reaching a checkpoint, where you can gamble away the apples to get weapons and perks, use the coins to buy silly weapon skins from the skinniest American woman, and experience some lore dumps in the form of audio files. My tip creaming right now, my tip, my tip sticky. Or the voices in your head. That is the first half of the DLC. The second half is the same, except now instead of surfing, you jump and climb. It's a very shallow and mindless experience, as I believe this DLC is nothing more than a lore filler. Instead of being bombarded with lore in one long cutscene, you are bombarded with lore while mindlessly zooming around Limbo. It's the gameplay equivalent to watching a long-form essay while fishing in RuneScape. The gameplay never reaches a eureka moment. Three hours in, you're doing the exact same thing you did in the first five minutes. The DLC makes you feel like things will get interesting, but they never do. Wow, this boss is really cool. I wonder what the next one looks like. The same. Man, come on, I get the wow, this gimmick of eating enemies into targets is cool. I wonder if there are other interesting twists. Wow, surfing is such a prominent part of this DLC. I wonder if I'll ever have to surf chase a target while shooting it. No. It baffles me how underutilized the entire setting is gameplay-wise. You have access to the glove abilities of the base game, yet never at any point do you engage with an interesting gimmick where you have to use them. Every combat engagement is just kill X amount of enemies. Literally anything you can think of could be implemented into this setting without feeling out of place. And yet, the most interesting break from the mold is Temple Run Duck Edition.
Artistically speaking, the sounds, the visuals, the lore, it's all fantastic. But the gameplay feels like a tacked on excuse to experience all of it without providing any merit on its own. I would feel slightly robbed if I paid 10 bucks for Trapped in Limbo. So the final rating is a... Out of 10. That's about it, do not forget to slap a like, slap a wife, hit the subscribe button, and I catch you next time, boost.